Hello my dear viewers, today we're gonna finish what I started, that is the history of those terrible people called Germans, although they will show themselves in Italy or other places if I'm gonna do videos on them, so yeah, I just wanna close this page and never to return to it. So let's jump into the year 407 in which Burgundians, Alans and many other Germanic groups started attacking, well, the Roman provinces, mainly Gaul. At the same time, a revolt in, well, Gaul erupted, mostly in modern-day Germany and Belgium, but it was crushed with the also the invasion of the Germans in 413 by the Romans. In 429, the first Hunnic raids appeared in mainland Germany, and they were mainly, well, raids. It was nothing of a scale what Attila would do many years from now. Also, they got defeated by Burgundians in 430, I believe, but it wouldn't matter because they subjugated like half of Germany, so they had the Furingi on their side, Langobards, the Rugi, entire Dacia, so doesn't matter really to them. In 436, uh, Burgundians decided to attack Rome on their own and they got defeated in province of Belgica. They had to retreat into their lands, but oops, just one year from now, that is uh, 37, uh, Huns returned to seek vengeance and they actually destroyed the entire Burgundian kingdom, making the Burgundians flee into the Roman territory. Also, at nearly the same time, Alemanni and Franks scored a bit of, well, victories and treaties with the Romans, so they got a bit bigger, as you can see now. By 440, uh, well, a lot of change. Furingians got a bit bigger. Then we have also Kingdom of Bavaria, or Tribe of Bavari, uh, well, now leading in the region as well with the Alemanni on their border. And Attila is ruling the Huns, and that means only death of the Roman Empire. And of course, the increase of of migrants coming from the east to the west, mainly Goths. In 450, Attila invaded into the Catalonian fields, or plain. As you can imagine, this was a very divided battle between Germans against Germans, Romans against Huns, other Huns against Huns, and even some, well, uh, Illyrian Romans against other Romans. This battle was, well, huge, humongous. If Romans would lose, I guess the Huns would just move west and we would speak Mongolian or something. I mean, you would. I already am. But you know, Huns lost that battle. Huns stopped being a threat after some time as well, and the Germanic tribes, seeing that there is no common enemy, that they don't have to be allied with Rome, started attacking Rome again, which will lead to a downfall of the Roman Empire. I said Rome three times in one sentence, it's it's actually over for me. In 455, Rome gets sacked by Vandals, uh, then in 56, I believe, the, well, Augustus, gets killed, betrayed by his Germanic uh, Fedorati or something like that, I don't remember what happened really, and um, there was a puppet placed on the throne of Roman Empire, so the other Romans uh, just don't like it, Visigoths invade entire Hispania, and part of France, uh, Rome just falls apart soon after, and uh, yeah, the Dark Ages begin, with the fall of Italy in 467. Okay, since we are here, I'm gonna explain what happened because I missed a lot of stuff. Angles and Jutes moved to England, that's uh, because, well, England fallen, because Roman legions just abandoned the area. Also sorry for the uh, Bavarians being so late uh, mentioned on the map, but I had to mention them so late on the map because I couldn't fight them uh, appearing in this timeline. I just put them on the map that they are here, in my opinion, but uh, on the records they appear much later, that's why I said it, uh, Rugi appear the here and here. I mean, sorry, not Rugi, the Bavarians. Speaking of Rugi, they migrated from the north to south to modern-day, uh, well, Germany and Austria, so that's why they are there, don't question it. As you can see, a lot of factions also disappeared because of conquests such as Macromani, but they were on decline since, uh, well, Vandals moved into the area, so yeah, they are gone. Also, three tribes in mainland Germany that names I foregore. I know one of them was Cheruski, uh, which are also Franks, so Franks just consolidated the area with the other Franks. Also, in the south, in, well, Austria now, and Croatia, Hungary, Serbia, you can see this um, brownish blob, and that's Ostrogoths, who will uh, play an important role later on, but quickly will disappear. And the green blob on the top is the Slavic tribes, who will uh, merge later on into Pomeranians. 
So for some time nothing happens really until 490 uh, when uh, Clovis, king of the Franks, conquers the kingdom of Soissons and establishes Frankish kingdom or Mavorangian kingdom. I don't know. He establishes something. Also four years later, Adoweiser was defeated by Ostrogoths and King Felderic, I believe. Somewhere near Ravenna, I don't really remember. And his kingdom, the kingdom of Italy, fell to Ostrogoths and thus they own the entire Italy. In 500 in 2007, uh, Burgundians and Franks attacked, uh, well, Aquitaine, that is, that was a uh, Visigothic territory, and they conquered almost the entire thing. When I mean they conquered, I mean Franks, because Burgundians got nothing from this war, which is a bit sad. In 517, Frankish kingdom splintered because of succession, and the sons of Clovis were at each other's throats. In 523, Frankish kings, even if they are at civil war, well, they are splintered, they hate each other. They look at Burgundy and be like, wait, we are related to the Burgundians from our, our mother. We are, we can rule this fucking piece of land. So they all invade at the same time. They actually win, but Burgundy somehow stays there and uh, some other guy takes place. I don't remember his name. Oh, Godomar. His name, his name was Godomar. And uh, he unites uh, the Burgundian nobility and the peasants uh, that were living in the Gaul. And he actually kills Clodomar, I think the guy that was uh, invading Burgundy at the time, they, they unite all the tribes. Uh, they still lose a lot of land, especially to Ostrogoths for some reason. I guess they saw a weakened country so they wanted to invade. Uh, nearly at the same time also Slavs started pushing into the, uh, well, East German territory. So now we have uh, Pomeranians, Sorbs, Valaisians, Polhapians, whatever you're gonna call them, they are there. And because they are pushing into this territory, Thuringians and Lombards are forced to uh, push deeper into west or south. Sadly, in 534, Kingdom of Burgundy actually fallen uh, because they lost a battle at Auton. I believe that's how you say it in French. I want you to imagine that nothing happens for another 20 years, so we are moving to 550, and what changes is that Slavs invade or migrate into Lombard territory, presumably... I don't know, really. Nobody knows. So yeah, now they own a bit of Bohemia. Also, Bavarians invade into Lombardy and kick them out, out of some parts here and there, but nothing too serious. Five years later, King Clofford I uh, tries to consolidate his, well, brothers, so that's neighbors. Uh, so he invades, manipulates, uh, poisons his way into unifying more territory under his banner. Also his brother that was ruling Neustria, Neustria, I don't know how to say this, uh, was also trying to consolidate power. So now we have those two blobs in, well, Francia trying to uh, win the civil war. But in 559, Clofair wins unifying the entire Franke under his banner, and well, yeah, here we are, that, that's about it. <laughs> There's nothing more to say. I could say that um, Bavarians were his vassals, but mostly it was like vassals only in name. His second vassal was more powerful, that was uh, Alemanni, who, uh, well, were under his direct control, but, uh, you know, it's like a lower type of vassal, they literally are inside the Franke, so it doesn't matter. So, let's jump to the year 562, because something funny happens, that is Clofair dies, and his son splinter the kingdom yet again. Amazing! I love Frankish succession. In 567, Avars invade into Pannonia and push Lombards into the Italy. Or Lombards push themselves into Italy to escape the Avars. At the end of uh, 590s, uh, Kingdom of Thuringia was actually destroyed and subjugated by the Franks, so they are no longer on the map. Finally, holy shit, they, they lived long enough, the, the Hunnic polity is finally gone from the map, uh, although most of the land was, uh, well, invaded by the Slavs and settled by them, so uh, that sucks. In 614, the Franks united yet again, bravo. Don't worry, it will not last, because in 623, they splintered it again, but this time between only two countries, so thank god it will not be terrible to draw. And in the lands of the Czechs, we have a Slavic uprising against the Pannonians. Fuck, I mean Avars, not Pannonians. There's no such thing as a Pannonian. <laughs> I'll tell it, but uh, you know what I mean. Samo creates his kingdom, he was a Frankish uh, weapons dealer, seller, merchant, yeah, there we go. And he created this uh, kingdom of his, but he didn't have children, so the kingdom collapsed 
collapsed soon after his death, sadly. 659, uh, yeah, Frank is splintered again, don't worry about it. And the Kingdom of Sama falls apart and it's partitioned between Moravians and smaller dukedoms and kingdoms and tribes of Slavs. Oh yeah, and Avars uh, reinvade again the territory they lost to him. <laughs> Let's jump to the year 733 and the Battle of Tours, right? I don't remember. Anyway, something more important happens, that is Frisia stops existing. They've been there for so long. Thank <laughs> god that somebody took them down. I literally... They literally existed the same amount of years as fucking Rome did. It's insane. Thank god they're gone. And let's jump to the year 772 because our boy Charlemagne is ruling the Franks, although he's been ruling for some time already. And he invades Lombards because Pope asked him to. Right? Right, Charlemagne? In 774, Charlemagne conquered the entire Lombard state and then decided it's time to whoop some pagan ass in Saxony. So that's what he does. He goes to Saxony and starts Saxon Wars that will drag for 30 years insane in 804 Saxons are completely conquered except Vidukin's rebellion that will uh, that will make him very angry about Saxons and he will literally genocide them for it which uh, for medieval standards it's th th he killed only 4,000 people that's not genocide to be honest in those times you could in those times you could do anything if you are a king nobody would even blink for what you done so Charlemagne was a good guy uh, because he could like literally kill every single Saxon in there and he only settled for uh, um, Christianizing them so yeah good Good guy Charlemagne. Also, he conquered Bavaria, consolidated uh, lands with Slavs, failed to invade Croatia, and also destroyed in the same year, 803 or 804, uh, Avar Kaganate. And although Bulgars helped them with that because they uh, invaded a huge chunk of Avar territory from the behind. So, yeah. Sadly, Charlemagne will die at some point. His uh, son, Pepin the Pious, terrible ruler, and he spent too much time in church, which uh, y'all motherfuckers should do instead of watching this video or or YouTube shorts or anything y'all need God but uh, because he was a ruler he was more important about ruling not praying to God and his kingdom his sons hated him that was the first thing his nobles seen him as weak so they just splintered the kingdom even when he was still alive uh, although he died soon after into West Francia Middle Francia and East Francia you can say Bavaria really uh, yeah sure or why not Bavaria also in 840 also at uh, well some 40 years before that uh, well the age of Vikings begin so we have the entire northern coast of uh, well Western Europe will be raided by Vikings and then uh, well 10th century they will settle in Normandy uh, no I'm not even talking about England because the things that will happen in England that's that's for a different video there's a lot of stuff going on in there but that's how it looks like now we have also Moravia is ruling in the Czechlands uh, they are a Christian polity they are big and they love owning land in 856 kingdom of middle Francia falls apart which well it's Frankish succession what do you gotta do so we have country as La Faringia, Provence and Italy and the devil returned the <laughs> fucking Frisians are back on the table. In 880, East Francia becomes their expansion into the West. That is, they fight their, uh, well, Carolingian brethren in France. And, well, they win, occupying most of the land that was Lotharingian. Ten years later, uh, well, France loses its Carolingian dynasty and Kingdom of Burgundy is back on the map. So, that's great. So we don't have to draw Italy anymore owning part of Switzerland because that's fucking cursed. In the year 900, uh, Czech lands are split between the Mjormid dynasty and Bohemian dynasty of Premislids, who will uh, later on unify the entire, uh, well, Czech lands. So yeah, Moravia is on total collapse. They are gone because uh, Hungarians are here. It's the year 900 and the time of adventures for the Hungarians begin and they start raiding as deep as into Spain. So yeah, that's, that's quite an achievement for them and uh, west stagnates very slowly but it does so in 912 two important things happened that is the settlement of vikings in normandy flanders uh, frisia uh, many places in germany 
and the German itself, East Francia, starts to lose cohesion. It starts to become HRE and it falls apart. And it looks like this now. It's it's terrible, but trust me, it will get worse. And I will I have no intention of drawing that. I'm just gonna put a white thing and it's gonna be HRE and that's it. I'm not dealing with what they done at later eras with it. I don't care. This is how it looks now. I'm gonna name those uh, bigger countries. Uh, so we have Saxony, Lotharingia, Franconia, Swabia and Bavaria, but you already know that one. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, Frisia is not Frisia anymore, but it's Holland. And there's also the Eastern port, but I am putting them together so it's simpler for you to understand. In 920, uh, Duchy or Kingdom of Saxony invades into the uh, Polabian tribes and conquers a lot of them, but it was a uh, very unstable conquest and it was a um, very quick incursion, so uh, after some time they will break free, but uh, it will take generation or two to get there. <laughs> In 966, Italy falls under the Holy Roman Empire, and it's time. It's here, although it's it, the Holy Roman Empire will be in two years, in just 68. But I'm gonna call it here because I don't want to draw the little polities in Italy because uh, that's fucking terrible. So yeah, um, yeah, HRE is here. Uh, before that wasn't uh, HRE; that was um, still a kingdom of Germany, basically. Uh, but it was organized in a way that we can see it as HRE without it being HRE. I don't know how to explain this, but I hope you get what I mean. <laughs> oh yeah, and Burgundy got a bit bigger, but that's about it. In 983, Denmark invades into Pomeranian tribes and some of them also break free from the HRE. As you can see, also Poland invaded into Bohemia. Uh, Bavaria got split between Carinthia and Austria. Lotharingia lost a lot of its territory with Franconia and and that new territory that was the Lotharingian, it's called Lorraine. At least I think so. Also, you can see there's a lot of white spots here and there, so you probably think, wow, Holy Roman Emperor got a lot of territory that is Saxony at this time. And no, Saxony shrunk in this time. Those small, those are small polities, small countries, city states, uh, bishoprics, it's insane in theirs. And I'm not drawing that, so I just put it under the fucking HRE uh, white color. So, um, there it is. Poland will fall back and lose its lands in 1032, so yeah, they hold on to those Czech lands for a pretty long time. At the same time, Kingdom of Burgundy was absorbed into the HRE, because Conrad II, the Holy Roman Emperor, received the crown of Burgundy twice, so... Uh, why would you give somebody your crown? Uh, French people, I guess. Although it wasn't all peaceful and handy dandy, there was battles wars over the crown of Burgundy. So, yeah, nothing comes simple in medieval times. At the same time, also Danes fell back out of the territory of Pomerania. So, uh, thank the Lord for that one. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. You know why Poles were uh, repelled from Bohemia? Because Bohemians, that is the king of Bohemia, became a tributary of the HRE and soon after was absorbed into it even. Well, a tree. So uh, imagine that uh, a bit having a bit of German assistance in killing Polish troops uh, helped them reclaim their lands. It's, it's insane, I know, but it's true. Also, I have sad news for you because we gotta end the video here, even if there is a lot to talk about later on. But well, I'm a busy man and I have other things to do than just make videos. Sadly, also I would like to. Uh, share what I've been using, that is the tastier armory, medieval European armors, uh, from Al 9000, I believe. Uh, he made really good textures for the game, and I was like, well, it's, it's, it's out there to be used, so I just used it. A lot of stuff I draw myself, but it was so good, I just had to put it in. And he has some really good late medieval armor, so I hope I'll be uh, able to use it in like some other videos, because damn, they are so fucking good, dude. I just, it just missing them would be so bad, so... Uh yeah, as you can see, I'm approving my videos, trying to fix stuff, make uh, pawns look better or map look better. I'm still trying to figure out what is the best for, uh, well, the looks of this um, channel. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you might share it with someone, like it if you wanna, well, watch it later maybe, or you just, well, you wanna give me a like for a job well done. I wish you a Merry Christmas, although that's a bit late, and a Happy New Year. So yeah, this is like a present video because I didn't kind of want to do it. But well, here it is. I'll be going. Have a good one.